Good evening, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Welcome. Welcome this evening. My name is Carolyn Baguma and I am the Senior Community Program Manager supporting our CD coordinators at the World Reimagined. And we are excited to be launching our community program to the people of Swansea. So thank you so much for joining us. So we're here to share with you the plans for the community program. But if you don't know already, the World Reimagined is a groundbreaking arts and education program exploring our shared history around the transatlantic enslavement of African peoples. The World Reimagined Globe Trails will go live between August and October. So we're really thankful to Swansea Council for supporting us and our presenting partners, Sky, to help us create this moment for change and growth. So over the next 50 minutes, uh, you'll be hearing from the team. You will get to meet the team members. You'll also get to hear our stories, um, the origin story from our founder. And we also will be hearing from Kiri, who will share the journey of discovery. Then we'll hear from Dennis in the artistic program. Kiri again for the learning program. Then over to Esther to hear about our heritage program plans in each city. Then we will share the Inspire program and introduce you to your city coordinator so we will have an opportunity for questions at the end so please do share your questions in the chat so before we move forward uh, please make sure that you've put your name and your organization in the chat as well and if you do need captioning please just click the buttons at the bottom of the screen to activate transcriptions and if you have any issues with that drop that in the chat as well so to get us started if I could invite my team members, the World Reimagined team, to put on their cameras and join me on screen. Amazing, thank you. So if we could start with Kiri. Introduce yourself. Sure, hi, I'm Kiri Lizama. I am the City Partnerships Officer uh, for the World Reimagined. Um, and just to share a bit about myself, I'm originally from Belize and moved to the UK in 2019. Um, and just it's been really interesting uh, moving to the UK and sort of understanding the gaps in knowledge um, of something like the transatlantic slave trade and that history. Um, so joining the World Reimagine has just been really meaning for me to, meaningful for me to engage in a project like this and contribute in ways um, that I'm contributing to an understanding and sensitivity around a topic like this. Um, yeah, so that's, that's me. Thank you so much. And Esther. Hi, lovely to be here and meet you all. I'm Esther Liscrew. I'm the Heritage Lead. Um, I grew up in North Birmingham in the 80s, which was, um, you know, a real time of social unrest in um, in the black community with um, conflict with our government. Um, but also this was the time I was going to school. Um, and at the time, I really enjoyed escapism through TV and film. I really loved period dramas. Now, as an adult, I know that black people have been a part of British history for a really, really, really long time, but that's not what I saw on television. So for me, one of the reasons I'm very excited to be part of this project is for young people who are growing up now to be able to point to people and say, do you know what? I know about this person. I know about this person. We can talk about all of our histories. And I think that's something that's really important to share and be a part of. Thank you so much. And I would like Cleo to join us. Kreuzo, um, I'm Cleo and I'm the community coordinator for Swansea and Bristol. Amazing. And if we could have Dennis join us and share a little bit more about the vision of the world reimagined. That would be fantastic. You don't mute myself to get with that. Sure. Uh, um, I'm Dennis. I'm the co-founder of the World Reimagined. Wonderful uh, uh, to be with you and the people of Swansea today. We've been uh, talking about the World Reimagined in Swansea for about a year now, and it's been uh, uh, you know, a real joy. Uh, and I love the fact that I get the privilege of introducing Lee in a minute, um, uh, uh, which is fabulous. So, um, so uh, unfortunately, Michelle Gale, who is my co-founder, couldn't uh, be here today, but I therefore get to um, tell you the story of how I met Michelle and how the world imagined sort of started off. And so 
the story sort of really begins in, in, in 2018 when I met Michelle uh, at an event that my wife and I uh, hosted in, uh, uh, for Nelson Mandela Centenary. And uh, it was with Andrew Mangani, who's over my shoulder there. And Andrew was on trial and in prison with Mandela uh, for 26 years and was just an extraordinary uh, human being. Um, uh, it's all really courageous, funny. Um, and you know, that night, Andrew spoke about the story of uh, the anti-apartheid movement and how they thought about a free South Africa and what you know one of the ideas he shared you know um, uh, with me in the time that I knew him uh, was this idea that you know this truth that our reality is created by the, the decisions that we make every single day in every single part of our lives and our families and our communities and our in our workplaces and those actions and decisions themselves are you know shaped and defined and motivated and driven by of what we understand about the world and you know what we understand about how we came to be here and what we understand about how we connect to one another and, and, and how we understand you know our power change things and you know that's in you know that's what Andrew shared that night which is how they thought about free South Africa and then Michelle and I talked about well you know if you think about how we make racial equality a reality in, in this country in the UK how do we think about what we understand about how we came to be here what do you think about how you think about our shared history? And, you know, Michelle came to that conversation, you know, with all of her uh, experience as a black woman in the public eye as an actor and singer, 25, 30 years. Um, and, you know, her mum's experience as a community activist for decades, her family coming to the UK from Jamaica. Uh, you know, and I came to that um, conversation being half German, half South African, which, you know, uh, on the face of it, not that great, but, uh, I was very fortunate because my granddad was Nelson Mandela's accountant in the 50s and 60s for the law firm of Mandela and Tambo. And so when I grew up, I got to meet all of these extraordinary people and um, I got to, you know, sit on the floor while people talked about truth and reconciliation and the importance of processing pain and trauma if you're going to be able to move forward. And those, you know, Germans of Africa uh, have imperfectly, but they're really trying to have those conversations and you know, growing up in the UK, we haven't so much. You know, I went through uh, the English curriculum and all I ever learned about the transatlantic trade and enslaved Africans was that William Wilberforce was a nice white guy who ended up. And if that's the limit of our understanding, then our ability to change things can be limited as well. And so Michelle and I talked about the fact that, you know, this isn't about discovering new stuff. There's huge scholarship, there's huge knowledge in this space. So how do we share it with more people? How do we invite more people in? Uh, and, you know, there, there's a great term um, in my Andrew quote that says, when you know better, you got to do better. So how do we give people the chance to know better? How do we do that without finger pointing and blame, but to sort of say, you know, you're invited and you've got a role to play. And there's huge power in saying you have agency. And, you know, we see that, you know, the incredible work that community organizations do every single day uh, across the country to make uh, racial justice a reality. And that's sort of where the world we imagine came from. And, you know, and, and as you hear about our program, you know, hopefully you'll see you know, seeds for that conversation and, and, and you know, the conversation we've been having in the four years since about how we want to bring that to life. So when we came across Sculpture Trails and the power of public art to speak to not just to what people know in terms of information, but speak to how they see themselves and speak to how they see the world around them, um, we were really excited about the idea of sharing, sharing the story through Sculpture Trails to invite people in. And uh, as you will see, and as you've already seen, um, you know, we've built an amazing team of people who bring their own uh, stories and perspectives and brilliance uh, to the world imagined. And I'm delighted to say that one of the first people uh, was Rudy Lawrence, um, who is a board member of the world imagined. I'll pass over to you, Natalie, to share why you joined. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, nice to meet everybody. Um, and it's a pleasure to be a part of this project, to be honest. So my name is Lee Lawrence. I'm also the founder of the Cherry Gross Foundation. And when I was just 11 years old in 1985, my mom, Cherry Gross, was shot by a member of the Metropolitan Police in front of myself and my siblings. That in turn sparked the 1985 Brixton is known as riots, but I call it an uprising. Um, as a result of that shooting, my mum was paralysed and, um, and confined to a wheelchair for the next 26 years of her life. There was a criminal trial in 85, um, but the officer who shot my mum was, was 
totally acquitted. So there was no justice. And we had to live with that terrible ordeal and the trauma um, until my mum passed in 2011. Um, in 2011, that opened up an inquest into my mum's death, which then investigated or sort of reinvestigated what happened back in 1985, because it was shown that there was a causal link between the, the shooting and my mum's death, which was very unusual. Um, so there was an inquest which came with its challenges because we couldn't get legal aid. Um, we had to do a petition, get over 100,000 people to sign. And then eventually the decision to get legal aid was overturned and we had a fair and transparent inquest process, which the result was serious multiple failings by the Metropolitan Police. And that came with an apology, but we had no accountability. So we had to battle for another further two years with the Met until finally they accepted accountability and we didn't get justice in a formal way, but we got restorative justice. So it took 31 years in total for my family to receive some kind of justice. And, um, and for us, although it wasn't, justice wasn't received in the, in the formal way where somebody went to prison, restorative justice was a big part of my family's healing. So when, when Dennis and Michelle invited me to take part in this project, um, one of the reasons why I was so compelled to get involved was because I felt if there was a better understanding of the black community, especially where we lived in Brixton, then that could have prevented um, my mum's shooting back in 1985. So to have the opportunity to be part of a project that will bring some understanding, some empathy, and look at how we reconcile with our, with our history, um, for me, is, is something I feel is very, very important and aligned with my own values and the foundation which I've, which I've set up. And the, the other thing that I just want to, the other point I just want to make is the, is the community aspect of the project um, is another thing that I was quite excited about because the world we imagine hasn't come to say we are the solution that um, to undermine any other organisation who've been doing this work for many, many years. It's um, the complete opposite. We, we want to shine a light on organisations within the community who have been working tirelessly to, to try and achieve racial justice and just look at how we can strengthen those organisations and to, and to allow those organisations to get the, the support that they deserve and need. Thank you so much for sharing um, your story and sharing how we came to be. It's always really inspiring to hear about how we all came to this position and to be in this moment. And, you know, it was inspiring for me because I come from facilitation background and I do a lot of intervention work and I really am passionate about intervention work, but I love that this also has art. So I really believe that it has the ability to touch so many people in the community. So thank you for sharing that. And I think this is a really great time to um, bring in Kiri to share our framework that will be driving this incredible journey that we want to go on with the journey of discovery. Sure. Um, so thank you for that, Carolyn. The journey of discovery really is the thematic framework um, that underpins all the different programs we have at The World We Imagine, uh, including the community program. Um, and it's nine themes, so I will just take you through that sort of thematic part. Um, we start with the first theme, which is Mother Africa. And here, this theme shares the richness of the African continent um, before the transatlantic slave trade. Uh, it's because too often when we speak about this history, people will begin with the transatlantic slave trade. But it was really important to us that we started with what came before and the contributions of the African continent in areas of philosophy, science, architecture, and so much more. And so this is the starting point of it all. From there, we move to the second theme, which is the reality of being enslaved. And this theme makes real the experiences of people from um, capture to voyage through the Middle Passage to life after and the lack of it. And all three phases just represented such a massive loss in life. And so it was important to accurately represent what that reality was like. The third theme is stolen legacy, rebirth of a nation. 
And this explains how Britain built its wealth, its power, and its influence on the backs of the enslaved. And we still see this across British society in um, the church and the banks and universities, and just how all that wealth um, was gained through engagement with the transatlantic slave trade. The fourth theme is abolition and emancipation. And this, of course, shares the heroes and the allies of the transatlantic slave trade. Um, but it also looks at the uh, complex motivations behind abolition. Uh, it looks at the difficult reality once people were eventually free. Um, and so this is something, again, that's not often looked at. The fifth theme is the complex triangle. And this looks at Britain's relationship with Africa, with the America, with the Americas, with the Caribbean. And we see this, for example, with the winner's generation, where members of the Commonwealth were invited to the UK to participate in British society. Um, and then what the follow of that was, where they were deported and rejected, even though they had not done nothing wrong. Um, and just so how that relationship just was very complex and manifested in very complex ways um, throughout time. The sixth theme is echoes in the present. And this shares the behavioral, psychological, physiological, and systemic inequalities that are still very much present today across British society. Um, and this makes the connections to say that um, from that history, there's still direct correlations that can be made presently. Um, and so, you know, critics of works like this and projects like this will often, um, you know, point to say, leave the past in the past, why are you still talking about this? Um, but this theme really brings it to the present to say that there are still consequences that we experience today. The seventh theme is still we rise, and this recognizes those who resisted. It honors the descendants of the enslaved, and it honors those who have broken new grounds in all walks of life, um, in areas of science, sports, literature, um, all the different areas. And so this team really celebrates uh, all that we have achieved in spite of that history. This leads us to the eighth theme, which is expanding soul. And this celebrates the huge cultural impact of the African diaspora across the world. Um, again, it shares Black joy, resilience of the Black experience, and how that is expressed in all forms of art. And finally, the thematic journey takes us to the ninth theme, the final theme, which is reimagine the future. And so now that we have gone on this journey together, we've seen each other, we've acknowledged this history quite possibly in ways that we have not before, what is the future that we can create together? Um, and that really is the journey of discovery. It takes us from that important foundation at the beginning to say, um, you, you must understand this history and the contributions of the African continent. There must be a processing of that history. And then we must look to the possibility of a future that we can reimagine together. Thank you so much, Kiri. Sure. Um, it's so important that um, to understand that it, the journey of discovery is really the foundation of all that we do and you can see the full themes on the website so go on, go along and check it out if you haven't already. I would love to invite Dennis now to share more about the artistic program. Fabulous, thank you so much. So uh, as Kiri shared, as I'm trying to be technologically advanced and share my screen while talking at the same time, let's see if that works. Um, uh, all of our work is structured on the journey of discovery, and that includes our sculpture trail that we're going to be bringing to Swansea uh, uh, this year. Um, so as you can see, uh, the globe um, is uh, 1.4 metres in diameter, it's 1.89 metres in height. Um, our founding uh, artist is Yinka Shonibare, a British Nigerian artist, Turner Prize on the and done incredible work uh, in this space and, and exploring this history and the subject of racial justice. And, you know, what we were really um, moved by his response is that, you know, he, he developed this form and the reason he went for a globe uh, was um, partly to root it in the geography of uh, the transatlantic trade and enslaved Africans, but also to um, give artists the greatest possible canvas to express themselves. Um, so not all of the globes are going to have 
uh, a map on that. That's Yinka's response in, in the first globe that he designed, which he called the world reimagined, um, which uh, uh, we took our name from. Um, so Swansea is going to have 10 of these globes uh, on its street, and that's going to be about an hour and a half um, walking tour. And, um, you know, there's going to be one for each of the nine of the themes of journey discovery, and then a tenth one where we commission uh, where we commission um, art, an artist to work with local communities to create a globe that speaks to place, so that you all feel really deeply connected uh, to the work that we've well imagined uh, and the trail. So uh, we're really excited about that. Now the globe that we've got for ten, or the, or the ten globes that we've got for that trail in Swansea. Um, uh, you know, it's obviously taking place in the other cities as well. So we're going to be in Birmingham, we're going to be in Bristol and Leeds and Leicester and Liverpool City region in London, as well as in Swansea. So in total, we're going to have 100 globes. Uh, now, those globes are created through um, an artistic, you know, artistic program, which is led by Lady Ashley Shaw Scott Adjay, uh, who sends her apologies that she can't be with us. So I'm going to describe this how we sort of um, brought the artists into the program. So we've got one group of artists alongside uh, Yinka, uh, which are our principal artists. These are artists who've exhibited uh, internationally. They've got a really powerful track record in addressing racial equality and exploring all of this history. People like Kamathi Donkor, Zach Ove, uh, Laquena McIver, Nicola Green, um, you know, this extraordinary artists who are bringing their talent um, out of the world of imagine, which we're really excited about. Then alongside those principal artists, uh, we've been um, supported by Arts Council England to commission five Caribbean artists to come to the UK uh, for artist residencies. Um, so they're gonna be bringing the voice of Bahamas, of Barbados, of Jamaica, of, Dom uh, of Dominica, of Trinidad and Tobago uh, into our trails um, and also you know, engaging communities uh, uh, across our different host cities um, uh, in, in the coming months, which we're really excited about. Um, and then alongside uh, the uh, principal artists, uh, the artists in the Caribbean, we've also got those uh, artists who are commissioned to work with communities to create that globe that speaks to place. Uh, and then alongside those, uh, uh, you know, a large number of globes will be created through our open call, which was open until the end of January. We had hundreds of submissions from across the UK, uh, and they've just been considered by our jury, which features uh, you know, the Channel Prize winner, Chris Afili, uh, Zoe Whitley, the director of the Chisholm Hill Gallery, Rene Musai, who's a senior curator of Autograph, and Professor Matthew Smith, who is the director of the Centre for the Study of the Legacy of British Slavery uh, at UCL. So an extraordinary group of people. And we really wanted to focus on art because the power of sculpture trails is that, you know, you, you come across these, you know, in the, in the spaces you go anyway. So we're going to, through that, reach an audience that are not necessarily even looking for the conversation. And through powerful art, always, always, always inspires dialogue and conversation. So they're going to be invited in. And because it's going to take place, you know, on, you know, in the, in the places you go anyway, and the streets that you know, and the, you know, in the city that you call home, uh, you know, it's, it's going to make the subject and the conversation and that journey that much more personal and relevant and powerful for you. Um, so we're really excited about, you know, bringing hundreds of thousands of people through this trail um, uh, to literally walk on that journey of discovery uh, uh, through those globes. Now, uh, they're going to be connected by a digital platform, um, you know, that will tell you about the artist, uh, about the artist, about what the artist was trying to do, where the next globe is, um, as well as some other things uh, uh, that the programme teams will tell you about. Um, one of the things that they will show you is where the learning globes are, because we also have smaller globes being created through the learning programme, which Kiri will now take you through. Thanks, Dennis. Um, so for the learning programme, we've approached it uh, similarly to, uh, to all the other programmes that we have. And in the spirit of trying to give people, do more than just giving people information, um, so it was our intention to create something that speaks to young people, that creates a real moment um, of learning and deep meaning for them, and um, create an understanding of how they see the world and how they see themselves in the world and their power to change it and agency to do that. Um, and so this is really what we tried to achieve with the learning program. And so with that, we've created, it's come, It's in two parts. And so we've created classroom resources and leadership in teaching training. 
um, with our classroom resources. It was created with educators, artists, historians, and subject matter experts like Barringer School of Benjamin, Professor Kehinde Andrews, um, and the cast of West Ends Hamilton. And for these primary school resources, they cover the theme of Mother Africa. For secondary schools and colleges, it goes across all nine themes in the journey of discovery that I explained. Um, and then alongside those classroom resources, we have the leadership and teacher train in teaching training. And this gives does more than just give tips to teachers um, on how to use those resources, but it also says to teachers, uh, you are racial justice leaders in your communities, the very nature it's inherent to being in the classroom and engaging with students that they will model your behaviors. So, you know, whether you're aware of it or not, uh, you are a racial justice leader in that way because they're modeling your behaviors from you. And so it gives them confidence to step into that role um, with the knowledge of how to navigate that space and helping them to understand things like power and privilege and how you have conversations about that to facilitate open dialogue and building a safe space for discussions like this to happen. And then if you have, you know, with the values that you have, how do you then become more, how do you then become more intentional and put those values into action? Um, and so that offer is shared with schools in two forms. And it, one of it is the poetic program where students can respond with poetry and that poetry will then be shared across our platforms um, and this is free for schools across the UK to participate in the poetic program and then there's the GLOBE program um, and the closing that closed on at the end of March where schools were able to sign up to participate in that and schools across the different host cities will be will have smaller GLOBEs where students will be able to do have designs on these globes and that will be displayed in shopping centers, malls, libraries, and public spaces so that the public can then engage with the artwork. And after that, these globes will be returned to the schools as part of an enduring legacy to say um, that they participated, of course, but then also to say that they made a stance um, for racial justice in their communities. And so far across the entire UK, we have over 250 schools who have signed up to participate, um, which means an even bigger number of students that will engage with the project in that way. And we're really excited to see what students will bring to it, what they'll bring to the conversation and the creativity and what they have to say about all of this. Um, and so that in summer is the learning program. And I will hand over now to Esther, who will explain um, the Heritage Programme. Thanks very much, Kiri. So with the Heritage Programme, what we're looking to do, as I alluded to before, is get a massive collection of stories. So with support from the Heritage Lottery Fund, we're hoping to build the Journey of Discovery online collection, which will uncover and work with heritage and cultural partners across um, each of the cities to really highlight and educate people on the connections and histories that might have been lost, might have been obscured or intentionally erased in the past and bring to light as well past projects that people have worked on that might have a sort of second life as it were as part of our project and really aligns with this journey of discovery themes back from mother africa all the way to reimagining the present through some of those more complex histories of abolition and emancipation um, we want to share those heroes and visitors to the city who spoke about abolition um, and share objects and items that are within your museums archives and collections as well so we're looking to build a collection of stories that are around about 200 to 300 words uh, long. We also want audio visual content as well, so that as people go around and experience the trails, they have um, ability to dig deeper into those histories, dig a little bit more information and really engage with that content. Um, and we wanna make it available as well to the public, but also to members of our community who are working on it, because we think that with this collection, we can really strengthen everyone's knowledge and understanding of what it does mean to have experienced some of these, um, these experienced life from different perspectives as well. Um, so I'm now going to pass back over to Carolyn. Thank you very much, Esther. Um, it's really nice to imagine all the amazing 
collections of stories that we're going to put together and I think it will really drive impact and add to the legacy aspect. So thank you all for sharing your different strands of the program. I hope it makes it clearer how we plan to engage all members of society in this journey. So now we're going to share what you're here for, what you're really here about. <laughs> no, obviously no bias on my part. The core piece of the World Reimagined community. So we describe the other pieces of the World Reimagined first because we wanted to give you the full content in which the community program sits. And I want to be clear that this is not a community program that is about what we do, but about how we honor what you do. After all, the entire point of the World Reimagined is to create a moment and a platform that honors the countless people and organizations who do the work of making racial equality a reality and really to support those organizations to continue to do their work and to share it with more people. And so we developed the INSPIRE program, which invites you to host activities and events during the World Reimagined, August to October, which speak to our shared mission that we can showcase and promote far and wide. And we chose the word INSPIRE deliberately because it's not about us, as Lee said at the beginning, it's about you and the work that you do. So for those that are long committed to the work of racial justice, you inspire us with your expertise, commitment and impact. And for those new to the mission and the subject, you inspire us with your openness and desire to step into the work and contribute. So together you show us that progress is possible, hard, but possible. And with the backing of Esme Fairburn Foundation, I'm delighted to share that we were able to appoint Cleo to be our community coordinator in Swansea. So I'm delighted to hand it over to Cleo to share how we hope to support and work with you in the coming weeks and months. Thank you and good evening everyone. It's great to be here virtually with you. Um, some of you I have met and some of you I've yet to meet, but I look forward to connecting with you all further. My name is Cleo Lake and I'm based just down the road or just down the channel in Bristol. And when I think about this history, the connection with the Bristol Channel, and indeed the connection between Bristol and Swansea are important ones. Both in terms of the industries that were financed and developed out of the largest and most brutal forced migration in history, the transatlantic traffic of enslaved Africans, but also in terms of the working people of Wales and England, their lives and their migrations, conditions and interactions across the two cities during this period. Just want to tell you a little bit about myself. My heritage is African, Jamaican and Scottish with some rumors of Welsh as well. My heritage is really important to me and I've always been inquisitive and a seeker of truth and justice. My background is in activism, politics, arts and culture. I have a degree in dance. I was the chair of the St Paul's Carnival, which is or was an annual free African Caribbean street carnival attracting over 150,000 people. I'm sure many of you have heard of it or have visited. I'm also a dance animator and dance therapist and a creative writer. I was an elected councillor at Bristol City Council between 2016 and 2021. And within that term, I had the honour of serving as the Lord Mayor of Bristol, the 11th only woman in, a, in an 801 year legacy and the second person of African descent. More recently, I was the lead researcher, consultant and report writer for the Bristol City Council Legacy Steering Group commissioned Project Truth, which stands for telling, restoring, understanding our tapestry and history. A never been done before consultation with African heritage communities in Bristol regarding what they thought should happen in relation to Bristol's role in transatlantic enslavement and the contemporary legacies. I tell you all this to give you a flavour of the type of woman I am and the things that I have been involved in, which have made working for TWR, the world reimagined, perfect for me. I believe that having had the experience of both working within institutions and outside of them within communities gives me a great insight into both the challenges and opportunities and possibilities of bridging differences and difficulties. I am driven by bringing people together and meeting people where they are, no matter how difficult this can be at times. It is an absolute blessing to be working in another city and that that city is Swansea. 
I really hope that I am able to do my absolute best in Swansea. I hope that I and the world reimagined will be embraced by the communities and that we work together to achieve what you see as the priorities for the activities around this epic project and its legacy. So let's have a talk about how we can support communities to get involved. Let me begin by starting with where we want to get to. There will be an anticipated hundreds of thousands, many, many, many visitors to the trail. And as these people go around the trail, maybe they will lean in and say, I want to do something or I want to learn more. And that's where we want to be able to connect them to the organisations and communities who have been doing the work in this field. To be able to say, for example, there's this amazing organisation over there that you can connect with, or have you seen this event that you can go to to find out more? If we can make an effective connection to promote the work that is already happening, we hope this will mean that these organisations will grow their audiences, networks and supporter bases, reaching more people which will have a lasting impact. That's why we hope you'll host events and activities during the trail period, which is from the middle of August to the end of October, so that we can celebrate and promote them. They don't have to be new events, they can be, but they don't have to be. You're doing these things if you're doing these things anyway. We just want to support you and share that work with more people. So let's make it real. There are three ways we can support. The first way is through a grants programme. We have, and you should be able to see this on screen now, some more information. We have a grant pot of £8,000 for Swansea to support um, activities and to host events during the World Reimagined tra Trail. Within that, we have two partnership grants of £3,000 each. These are for partnerships that either, one, bring together a smaller grassroots organisation with a larger organisation to connect audiences and support the growth of the smaller organisation, or two, bring together an organisation doing racial justice work with one that is new to it in order to broaden out the people who are involved in this work and share expertise. In addition to these partnership grants, we have multiple micro grants of up to £500 to make the hosting of events a little easier and more possible. Applying for the grants is of course open to anyone um, and we only have a select number we will be able to make. We've worked to make the application process as easy as possible and we've worked with Swansea City Council to identify other funding opportunities you can apply to as well in case you're not selected for these particular grants. The second way we will support is through regular workshops. Every second Tuesday, starting on the 19th, we're going to host online workshops for community organisations across our host cities. Most of them will focus on skills based topics with a range of people talking about the topics, including, for example, um, applying for grants, using creativity in your community engagement, welcoming new audiences and encouraging allyship, taking care of your own mental health. So a broad spectrum of topics. Some sessions will also be about just connecting community organisations across the country, sharing experiences, expertise and getting to know each other. There's incredible solidarity and strength in our shared mission and we know it's often hard to connect. These online workshops are going to be open to anyone. Alongside these online workshops every two weeks, I'm also going to host a monthly in-person workshop in which we can come together to share ideas, to connect, hopefully over some food and to work out how we can make the world reimagined the biggest possible opportunity for your organisations and the city. And our first in-person event workshop will be on April the 29th at the Grand Multicultural Hub at 6pm and we will send you out more details of how you can register for that. The third way we can support is through promotion. You will be able to submit your events to us to list on our digital platform, which we will then promote to trail visitors and across our channels. This will hopefully help you grow your audiences and supporter bases. This is open to anyone who is hosting an event that is in the spirit of the world reimagined. You won't need to have received a commission or taken part in any of the workshops. We want to share and celebrate the full breadth of work people do 
for racial justice. And so through these three ways of supporting the grants, the workshops and promotions, we hope that organisations across Swansea will host their events and activities that we can share and celebrate and grow the community of people who get involved in the conversations and work of racial justice long into the future. That is the INSPIRE programme. But that's not all. It's important to us that community is at the heart of every part of the world reimagined. We've already heard about the Community Globe that will be the 10th globe in the trail. But we will also work to, over the next year, connect community organisations with our heritage partners, with our schools and with our corporate partners, so that the relationships we have built during the World Reimagined benefit you in the long run. And that also speaks to what happens after the trails leave the streets of Swansea. First of all, the Community Globe is going to be gifted to the people of Swansea as a lasting legacy. And we're working with the council to make sure that this is done in a way that stays accessible. The majority of the globes are also going to be auctioned. The money raised will go to make sure our learning programme and journey of discovery history collection stay accessible. But the majority will go to creating what we hope will be a six figure grant making programme for racial justice projects and organisations across our host cities. So you'll be able to apply for that in early 2023. So we hope that whether it's in the support or the connection to the hundreds of thousands of visitors to the trail or in the longer term grant making we're working to raise, we hope that you'll see opportunity and something exciting in the world reimagined for you. Thank you so much, Cleo. Thank you for sharing the INSPIRE programme and our plans. Please be sure to go along and meet Cleo on the 29th at the Grand Theatre Multicultural Centre. So we will be sharing those details in the chat. Now, if you haven't already, please do share some questions because we are about to do a QA. and a um, So if you haven't got it ready, we have got a couple of questions that we can go through. And if you have any general questions that we don't get to or you've you figure out after we finish this session, you can always send them to inspire at the world reimagined and we will get some answers over to you. So looking at the questions ready. So we've got a question from Carol. Could libraries take part in the GLOBE program as well as the schools? So I think we should direct this to Dennis. So close to hitting on you. Um, so uh, we closed up the, um, the GLOBE program for, uh, uh, for schools at the end of March. Um, however, we would love you to get involved um, with the Purdy program. And, and you know, if you get in touch with us, um, we can also talk around um, how to give you access to the learning resource and everything else. I think that's a really exciting program uh, uh, there, for sure. So I'm afraid that the GLOBE program is now uh, closed to schools. We really uh, looking at um, poetic responses and other uh, forms of creative uh, response. Thank you for answering that. I've got another question here, which is when can you apply for the grants, the micro grants and the partnerships? So the applications are open on the 1st of May. So you have a chance to meet up with the coordinator and have a little think about what it is that you are delivering that is relevant or that you could deliver in collaboration with another organization. And the deadline for applications is the 31st. So we will be informing successful awardees of grants in June. So if you, in the meantime, check on our website to find out the information you need for applying, what grants are available, what's eligible, what the criteria is, the spirit of the world reimagine, all the information you need. So ready in time to apply on the 1st of May. Let me see if there's any other questions. Do we know where the GLOWS will be lo located? This is like the million dollar question, Dennis. <laughs> We're working on it is the answer. <laughs> Um, so uh, I know that the team uh, you know, we've been working very closely with Swansea Council around making sure that we find uh, you know, a route that really connects meaningfully uh, through the city centre. It's a great experience for people. Um, so uh, we're we'll putting all that together. So we're really excited to share that soon. Amazing. Is there any other questions that are coming through? 
I think the only other question is, is any other ways to get involved? So, of course, I think great point is to connect with the community coordinator, uh, register to find out about all our upcoming events because we've got the in-person events, but we've got, also got the online Inspire events. We've got our first on the 19th of October, which is the power of creative engagement. So register the, for those, but also there'll be opportunities to list your events for free. So if you have anything that's coming up that really connects to our mission and our values, we want to use our platform to promote it. And of course, make sure you visit the trails. I think that's like a very big part of this whole journey. Um, and I think that's it for questions for the time being. So I think it'd be a really great opportunity now for us to share a lovely video, which is written, narrated, performed by Keisha Thompson, who is coincidentally our head of learning. Dennis, fire away. In order to reimagine something, you need to understand what it is first. I thought the world was equivalent to the earth, but when you check the definition, the world means all of human activity. It's not about the physical globe, but about the physical nature of humanity. I guess that's where I've been going wrong. I've been trying to reimagine the world on my own but it doesn't belong to me. You're not an ink drop on this lonely narrator's tongue. If I close my eyes this time, will you promise to come with me? You see, a dream is like a cloud, it's deceptively heavy. The imagination is far too vast for one person to explore. So come with me, whilst I try to reimagine once more. To reimagine means to take a mental picture to take something that exists and put it in a different context, like a Benin bronze in a British museum cabinet. See, I don't really want to make mistakes of the past. I want to make compost of inherited hate and circular debates frustrate my fears until they're surpassed. So I guess that's where the re bit comes in. Re means to go backwards and start again. For too long, we've been singing a song of denial and discomfort tonsils thronging with the discordant sounds of a legacy gone wrong. We all make mistakes, but when you make a wrong turn, you can't keep driving straight, looking for change. So put me off. I won't be fueled by misguided pride and polished shame. I can no longer close my eyes when there's so much work to do. Put the nose back on the sphinx. Take the myth out of Timbuktu. I want to reach down the back of the sofa of this society and fish around for all that loose change. Like Aloda Equiano to slavery's abolition, Samuel Kojid Taylor to the classical music composition, Princess Sophia Dilip Singh to the suffragettes. You don't have to go far to see how easy it is to forget. No wonder my eyes don't want to invest in frivolous fiction when there's so much fact waiting for its recognition. I thought I could fix things by simply asking you to join me in the dark room of humanity, but photography, it's not a row of negatives waiting to be seen. It's about exposing what has already been. To reach the unknown, you have to retrieve, recall, rewild, reinstall, repurpose, repair, go back to the beginning, start again, but now do it with flair. The world reimagined is a lotus bud waiting to unfold. The world reimagined is bubble bath in the hands of a five year old. The world reimagined is our story untold. And telling it won't be easy, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. We can turn fossils into plectrums, reject all that humdrum stuff fed to us without question. No suggestion that the truth is a spectrum. If you're the billing wall, I'll be the graffiti. If you're a scroll, I'll be the words of Rumi, because there's no song outside of our vocal range. If I set my mind to it, my voice is louder than climate change. So take a step back. Use what's there. Make it new.
Duchamp's masterpiece Fountain was an upgraded loo and it was actually discovered by a baroness called Elsa, to be completely honest with you. Like a Rorschach image, we all start from the same place, then come out with different perspectives and where we've gone wrong in the past is our failure to respect this. The world we imagined is a gallery of things we were not sold. The world we imagined is a humble alchemist's gold. The world we imagined is our story untold. That beautiful poem there by Keisha Thompson. If you'd like to find a link to that, that can be found on the first page of our website. And that's it from us. Thank you so much for joining us to hear our plans for the INSPIRE program in Swansea. We are so thankful to Swansea Council for all their support, to Sky, our presenting partner, to Esme Fairburn for funding the INSPIRE program. So if you haven't already, please refer to the chat sharing. We're sharing in-person dates, our social media, our emails. We also will have information on the website that you can find out about grants all the details for grants, as well as the Inspire sessions. And as they're starting next month, register. So if I can invite the team to join us so that we can say our goodbyes. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this evening.